What is containerization? I'm sort of fond of uh, out of left field answers to questions because uh, sometimes they make deeper points. Containerization is an API. API is a term from computer science that means, uh, I think it's applications programming interface. And it's an important architectural idea because it defines the public part of a reusable piece of code. For the most part, when you write a computer program, if you want it to be reused, you keep most of it hidden and expose just a few very well-defined semantic definitions. I don't care how you write your code, but this is the API, and if you implement that API one way and I implement the API another way, everybody's happy. So uh, what does that have to do with containerization? The brilliance of the standardized container is that it forms, metaphorically speaking, an API between shippers and carriers. Before we had containers, everything was shipped what people, at least in the military, call break bulk. If you needed to move stuff from one place to another, it was mostly longshoremen on docks loading up, you know, big nets full of stuff and putting them onto boats. You know, and so you had to really be careful, you know, don't, don't put the anvils on top of the bananas or something like that. You know, you need, to, you need to kind of be very careful. So it took a lot of work. It was actually great in terms of employing a lot of people, but um, worldwide commerce really just didn't even happen. There was no API, right? The whole system of how ships were designed and how trucks were designed and the carts that you would move things in the nets were all open to creative, creative use by the longshoremen. And then these guys came up with this idea of a container. Just, why don't we make a container? And then, once you define a kind of a common standard shape and size, and you just say, look, just build stuff to move boxes around. Well, then you can build a, a, a truck that you can put the box onto. You can build a boat that you can stack the boxes really tight. You can build cranes to pick them up and put them on trains. And you can move trains and, and actually move the boxes around. And suddenly, you just get this explosion because you've just adopted this one thing. All you have to do is agree on how wide it is, how tall it is, and how you grab it and stack it. And then you can have a, a, a sort of flourishing of, of ideas and innovation. The standard container said, okay, look, let's agree on an interface. The inside of the box belongs to the shipper. The outside of the box belongs to the carrier. And there is a bright line between those. Shipper, you do whatever you want inside this box. When you're finished, we're gonna close the door, seal it, and I'm not going to ask any, any questions. I don't need to know what's inside that box. It's exactly analogous to, to my wanting to use your program. I don't care how you wrote your program. I just want to know what the API is. And once that seal is closed, I only have to worry about the outside of the box. Oh, and let's put a barcode on this box so that you and I can, can talk about it, right? But the barcode's just a number. It doesn't tell me what's in the box. It just allows us to refer to the same thing. I will get the box from here to there. Then we will break that seal. And at the moment the seal is broken, the responsibility shifts and it's your problem again. This notion of having bright lines and pre-negotiated points of responsibility is very important for large, stable, scalable systems. It's a deep pattern, and containerization is simply the example of that pattern applied to the shipping industry. The reason we like it is because we need, but are currently lacking, the analogous negotiation of a point of responsibility in the storage and transport of information. 
information is still being shipped around break bulk. I mean, it's a mess. There are like 53 different protocols. And there's one that we use for email, and there's another one we use for web pages, and there's another one we use for email when it's coming in the other direction. And it just goes on and on. There's a special protocol just to move the time of day around on the internet. This is like having one kind of box for eggs and another kind of box for flour, you know, and a whole other system for moving refrigerators around. It's just insane. This is something that barely creaks along today, and when we get to the age of trillions, it's gonna be completely untenable, and uh, we gotta do better. If you look at the 1960s, let's say the decade starting around uh, 1966, when the container really started to be used, what you find is the amount of global trade was two times the amount of global manufacturing, and it was two and a half times the amount of global output, right? So, so suddenly, in that decade, when we agreed on just a common box that we could just move around, the world began to start flattening out. You know, we really started to see worldwide commerce strike, and it had a big economic impact on the world. And that liquidity, a common currency that can be used to move stuff around all over the place, really was one of the fundamental things that led to the growth we've had in the 20th century. So what will lead to the growth in the 21st century? Well, we think containerization of information.